Visitors to the British Museum in London can soon find themselves face to face with objects both unfamiliar and unsettling. Among these, one in particular has an enduring power to ensnare the imagination. In the British Museum's Mexican gallery reside some of the institution's most mysterious artefacts. These are relics of vanished civilizations that we can never fully understand. The most prized object here is perhaps the most beautiful and the most mysterious. A double-headed serpent made in Aztec times from turquoise mosaic. The double-headed serpent encapsulates a lot of the enigmas and contradictions of Aztec culture. I like to think of it sometimes as both a fierce and beautiful world. I find it very chilling because no matter how much your eye might run and run and run around these shapes, it's always led in the end to those teeth and those teeth absolutely mean death. To see two serpent heads and to have them in this precious material, the color of water makes it unique. People like the symmetry, the beauty, the color. It has a vibrancy and an energy which I think carries just as well today as it, it did in Aztec times. It is at once alluring and disquieting. The double-headed mosaic serpent is over 500 years old, but even in a darkened gallery, it still glitters and sparkles. Its original home was probably the city of Tenochtitlan, the extraordinary capital of the Aztec Empire. Well, the Aztec civilization is tremendously sophisticated, even by modern standards. They have wonderful masonry and architecture. They're advanced astronomers. Even in some ways, their medicine's quite advanced. And the capital city reflects all of those things. It's a tremendous city on an island in the, the middle of an enormous lake. It's in some ways a modern version of Venice with straight canals running alongside straight streets. Tenochtitlan no longer exists, and the serpent survives only by chance. Ironically, the destroyers of the city were perhaps the saviors of the serpent. The Spanish conquistadors made landfall in Mexico in March 1519, led by Hernán Cortés. When the Europeans and the Americans confronted each other for the first time, this was really almost like aliens arriving from Mars. It was the only time in our recorded history that we know of this undiscovered world being contacted and being explored and both cultures coming into contact with one another. And I think an object like the turquoise mosaic in many ways represents the gulf between those two worlds. When Hernán Cortés arrived in ancient Mexico, the Aztecs thought that he might be a returning god. They sent precious gifts to him, perhaps including the double-headed serpent. It's certainly possible that something like this could have been given to Cortes. Turquoise is something incredibly valued by the Aztecs, and it's a beautiful piece of workmanship, something that they might have wanted to give to the Spanish to show their craftsmanship. That said, it's not the kind of thing that Cortes tends to be as interested in. He's really very keen on the gold. Cortes had his gifts shipped back to Europe as mere curiosities. His eye was on a prize no less than a kingdom. The conquistadors' fatal mix of Christian fervor and personal avarice meant that within two years, the Aztec civilization had been added to the roll call of lost cultures. Never again 
would an object like the double-headed serpent be produced? Mexico is home to over 700 species of snake. For the Aztecs, these graceful and deadly creatures had great mystical significance. The serpent is a very important symbol in Mexican history. It's the symbol of regeneration, it's the symbol of fertility par excellence in ancient Mexico. The serpent shed its skin and of course it made the symbol of a new life, a new regeneration of the earth. It was um, symbolic of the earth, it was symbolic of blood. The serpent um, appeared in every art. One of the most striking and fearsome Aztec artworks that survives is the eight-foot-high statue of the goddess Coatlicue, or the serpent-skirted one. Her arms and belt are serpents, and her head is made up of two giant snakes. Like the serpent-skirted one, the British Museum's double-headed serpent is clearly no zoological specimen but it does have roots in the real world. The Aztecs were keen observers of nature. We can see this in the wonderful sculpted stone image of the naturalistic snake. With a double-headed serpent, the possible inspiration may lie in the observation of uh, snakes in nature uh, when they're either mating or fighting, intertwining, and producing an image of one body and two heads. And the image of a double-headed serpent also had well-established symbolic meanings for the Aztecs. The idea of a double-headed serpent occurs um, first among the Maya, perhaps, in the, in the form of a, a soul bar, which is just a bar held by a ruler to his chest. And I think originally either end was a, a white lily. Over time, this developed into a double-headed serpent which was associated with the sky and the idea of the ruler communicating with the sky through this bar. The double-headed mosaic serpent might then have been used by Moctezuma, the last independent ruler of the Aztec Empire. This symbol of wealth, power and divinity would have been displayed by him during religious ceremonies. The double-headed serpent has suspension loops visible in the wooden frame at the back. And so clearly it must either have been uh, suspended, possibly as a pectoral worn across the chest, or perhaps attached to something and displayed as, as a badge of office. One has to imagine that the objects are deployed together with a, a, a rich array of other costumery and, and ritual regalia that together would have given a very vivid sense of quite possibly reenactments of uh, creation stories, uh, analogous, one might imagine, to uh, the medieval English mystery plays where sacred events are enacted out in view of the public audience. Worn by a ruler in these religious ceremonies, the serpent might have called to mind for the Aztecs one of their most important gods, Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent. Quetzalcoatl, whose name translates as Quetzal feathered serpent, was a deity sometimes associated with the wind, but more often with the sky. And the association between the double headed serpent and this god is perhaps also made through the colour turquoise, which is very reminiscent of the, the daytime sky. Now, half a millennium after it was made, scientists in the British Museum are subjecting the serpent to the closest possible scrutiny, an attempt to better understand the physical reality that underlies its mystical charge. 
The main material used in making the serpent was turquoise, and microscopic analysis of the tiny tiles, or tesserae, shows just how skilled the Aztec's working of that stone was. When viewed at high magnification under the optical microscope, the detail of the way that the individual tesserae on the object were worked is immediately obvious. We see grinding marks going in different directions on adjacent tesserae, showing how they were polished before they were put in place. Another very interesting feature is beveling of the individual tesserae. This would have been very important to achieve that mirror-like surface finish that we see on the serpent. The serpent drew on the resources of a vast empire. The turquoise was imported from what is now the southern United States, well over a thousand miles away. The white conch shell of the fangs was brought overland from the Gulf of Mexico. And the red shell of the gums and nose was gathered by deep water divers as far away as South America. Once safely in the Aztec capital, these were all fixed onto a base of wood, hollowed out to form a U-shape. The expert craftsman would have known that scooped out wood was less likely to shrink and crack, thereby loosening the precious tiles. Those tiles were fixed to the wood using a resin obtained from local trees. Known to the Aztecs as copal, it had a symbolic meaning, as well as a practical use. Well, the copal resin was especially valued because it was used as uh, an offering in incense burners. And there's both a, a wonderfully uh, evocative visual image that's conjured up of the serpentine wreaths of smoke coming from such incense burners, and an all-pervasive aromatic, aromatic smell, um, a, a perfume that would have pervaded the interiors of temples and been very strongly associated in people's minds with their experience of the rituals and ceremonies in which it was used. On the rear of the serpent, there are traces of gilding, indicated that it might once have been covered in gold leaf. And around the empty eye sockets are traces of beeswax, a fixative. This suggests that the serpent originally had eyes, perhaps of polished pyrite, a silvery black stone, like the Aztec skull mask, also in the British Museum. This isn't the only feature that might originally have been different. The holes under the jaw are intriguing. They're surrounded by tesserae that are clearly original and part of the original mosaicing design, so they're an original feature of the object, and something must have been threaded through there. It's tempting to speculate that there may have been some kind of tongue fashioned inside each mouth of the serpent and that maybe this was a movable feature if, if the object was used or worn, these might have moved around. Perhaps there were strings through the holes that would have enabled somebody wearing the object as a pectoral to move the tongues themselves. The double-headed serpent was one of the supreme achievements of a culture that stretched back thousands of years. But even as it was being made, the destruction of that culture was imminent. The encounter between the Aztecs and the Spanish, which occurs with the arrival of the conquistadors, really is a tremendous encounter. It's perhaps the only occasion in history when we see what we'd see as a truly modern civilization meeting a truly ancient one. And it's a great shock for both sides. Even the Spanish you've seen at people on the outlying islands are totally unprepared for the great civilization which they encounter when they get to the Valley of Mexico. <laughs> Into the Aztec world, which lacked iron, gunpowder, horses, and even the wheel, came a tiny but technologically advanced alien presence. To the bewildered Aztecs, the conquistadors